everyone, welcome back to the study tube project. I hope you've all had a nice day. If you guys have never come across me before, my name is Rosie and I have my own YouTube channel and social media here. I graduated from the University of Oxford in 2019. I did archaeology and anthropology. Now I'm on a gap year trying to earn the money that I needed to do my masters next year in forensic archaeology and anthropology. So, today's video is all about what you can be doing in your free time, in lockdown specifically, coronavirus, but not necessarily, to build stuff for your personal statement. This isn't just for undergraduate personal statements, though I think most of you here will be at that level. This is also for postgraduate personal statements, and I used these tips in my own postgrad personal statement, so this is all from experience. So number one is wider reading, and I think anyone will probably give you that piece of advice and it's probably quite an obvious one even your teachers at school are probably saying you need to be doing your reading guys you need to read around your subject make sure you know everything and not just things that are specifically asked for now i know how hard it can be to find books that are relevant to your course when you haven't got a university login or any libraries open to go and visit so i give you free open access journals <laughs> I'm so lame. No, that isn't true. Like... Okay, yeah, that is true. Some that I have come across personally are cultural anthropology. Now, obviously, that is for anthropology, but you can find lots on there, so it might not necessarily be your subject, but if you're doing other subjects like history, geography, sociology, medicine even, there might be an article on there that links in some way to your subject and we might just get you interested and show you other people that you can look at. This one, which is called the Directory of Open Access Journals, DOA, is another one. They are all free access on the internet and they're all by academics and proper writers. Google Scholar is another good way of doing this. You type in a question or a subject that you want to look into onto Google Scholar and it will find any of these that are on the internet. Some of them are closed so that you might just be able to find the abstract but a lot of the time from my experience they are open and they might be links to like Google Books and sites that have like a summation page or even reviews of articles that are by other people. So reviews are good because it means you can look at two different viewpoints and already have an idea of some critiques of the original article. Obviously it's better to have both, but if you can't, you can't. Number two is some interesting TV shows and films. You don't always have to just do reading. There are so many subject documentaries and subject dramas, which whilst may not directly give you information for your personal statement, they might show you new academics that you could look into, new specific areas of the subject that you want to do that you didn't know. Wow. For me doing archaeology, for example, there are always documentaries on about discoveries and from that you can see like which universities are in charge of these specific archaeological digs or which professors you might want to do some more research into, which specific area of history that I might then want to look into for more readings. It's, it's a really good tool, I think, especially when you're bored and a little bit brain dead. If you watch the telly, you can literally put a documentary on and kind of even just subconsciously absorb it. I'm not saying sit and take notes, I've literally never done that. Watching films of books and plays of books and TV shows of books, like basically dramatizations of books, is also a really good thing to do if you're doing stuff like English, media or drama. Any of these things is going to help you and you can talk about them on your personal statement because why not? Saying that, I think personally I would use media um, in terms of vi like visual media as more of a source to then go and do more research so it would be a starting point as opposed to an end point number th <sighs> i do that every time three number three <laughs> Number three is to find some online courses. These are surprisingly easy to find considering I didn't even know they existed before lockdown. I have a big list in my little book of places you can look. I personally have already done two courses from futurelearn.com completely free. There is an option to do a paid course but 
I wouldn't bother. I think I'd just do the course and mention it in your personal statement. No one is going to check if you've got a certificate. As long as you have made kind of adequate notes alongside, like actually used the course to your benefit as opposed to just doing it to have a name drop in your personal statement. It is not a super curricular activity if you haven't taken in the information and actually learned from it. So why I've been doing this course is so that I can get a little bit ahead on my master's course and also then I've used it in scholarship publications to say what I'm doing to show that I'm keen about my subject and really genuinely interested in it even when I'm not like having to be studying it. So we have futurelearn.com, Coursera, Open University, Allison.com and Oxford Home Study Centre and also EDX. All of these have courses from universities across the world. They're international and also some of the top universities in the world. So there's courses from like Harvard, Oxford, Durham. I've also done one from Sheffield. I've seen them from Yale. There are so many and they're not also just kind of new topics that you won't know. There's also A-level booster courses on futurelearn.com which could really help you if you were in year 12 or even in year 11 and looking to maybe do a little bit of extra work before you start your A-levels to see if you really enjoy the content. There's quite a lot of those on futurelearn.com. Number four is to email university academics. Don't just bombard them with emails. You need to come up with like a set of questions, maybe read one of their papers first or look into an area of research that is close to their heart. For example, do your documentary work first. If you find an academic that does something you're really interested in, locate them on the internet, have a look through their scholarly publication things, they're always on the website telling you what they've done, then have a look if you can access any of them. If you can't access any of them, send them an email, request that you see it. They love to engage with people about their work, which is a scary thing to do, but it also shows that you're proactive and who knows, they might give you free access to a, um, a paper. That's not a hard word, is it? Okay. They might point you in the direction of more things that have been written or more documentaries that have been made that would interest you. Another thing you can do with this as well is to look which universities they're attached to, especially if they're attached to a university that you're applying to, then you can see which is their specific research interest and maybe explore with them what modules they lead that you might be able to take and really enjoy and get some pre-reading lists that might help you. In terms of adding that to my personal statement, I think I'd be less inclined to do it as a direct I spoke to such and such and more as a stepping stone to finding more things to look at and read and to talk about how you've looked into this topic further by contacting such and such. Basically, find a way to show that you have gone above and beyond for your subject and that you genuinely have a real drive in this area. And finally, number five is look for online lecture series. Now, this isn't the same as online courses. These lecture series are just series of lectures, hence the name. There are loads on YouTube by various universities, by various individuals and institutions. Yale's YouTube channel, for example, has free lectures as it does Stanford's and Oxford's. And Oxford also has a podcast website, which is podcasts.ox.ac.uk with 4,000 free podcast lecture series that you can listen to and learn. Yale also has a specific website for their open access lectures, and that is oyc.yale.edu and also, like I said, on YouTube. As well, there's a lot of events online with the pandemic going on because none of these conferences and events can go on in person, which means that you can all access them. So if you just have a Google, like online webinar, online conference or online lecture series, and then put your subject or area of interest afterwards and you can find them. And of course, these count as super curricular activities because you're still attending an event, it's just virtual, and you can definitely add that to your personal statement. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope it helped you out. I know this is a really tough time for 
trying to get this experience especially if you're going into something a bit more practical but you've just got to do and work with what you can and hopefully just these five tips, five resources might help you out with that a little bit. If you did find this helpful and enjoyable, go and subscribe to all of my social medias and we will see you tomorrow for another video on the StudyTube project. Bye!